What is going on everybody, it's Alex here. Happy New Year, and today we're gonna talk about real estate. They're like, hey Alex, why you always talk about stocks when I learn about real estate? Okay, you got it. Today we're gonna talk about real estate. And if you stick until the end, you're gonna find out, first of all, how to smash that like button. And second of all, you're gonna find out exactly how you can analyze a deal, and we're gonna walk you through an investment property deal, okay? In this example, I'm gonna reuse round numbers, but I'm gonna get right into it. The thing with real estate, Many people, they focus on numbers and they focus on the deal and 100% that's right. There is a part of real estate that is crucial. It's so important and nobody talks about it. When it comes to real estate, there is an R and a capital R and that is relationships. Relationships with a bank, relationship with your accountant, relationships with your teams. This is so crucial. You know, I cannot stress it enough. If you have a good relationship with a bank, and the appraiser that's gonna come out, amazing things happen. So build relationship with the people that can help you, okay? This is life advice as well as real estate advice, relationships. I think that's why real estate starts with an R, because relationships, real estate, you get it? Okay, let's say that you found an apartment building, right? That's a gorgeous apartment. So we have a 10 unit apartment building, right? Now this 10 unit apartment building, this has, uh, like we said, 10 units and each unit pays a thousand dollars a month rent. Okay, I'm going to use round numbers for the sake of the example. Now this guy ha that owns this apartment complex, he's going to sell it to you for a hundred thousand dollars, right? A hundred thousand dollars per unit. So this entire deal, one big one, one million dollars, all right? So this is our example right here, all right? That's what we have so far. So that's the sell price right here. Now, I guarantee you that you haven't heard this in many places. This is a very, very interesting way to structure a deal, all right? So now look at this. That's how we're gonna structure the deal. Well, first of all, it's an investment property. And since it's an investment property, there is no way around it since it's an investment. We have to put at least 20% down. Now it's tough times. That's apartment complexes, so you can maybe get away with 20-25% when it comes to residential, mixed with commercial, or just triple net lease properties. We might have to put 35 or 30%. I'm gonna keep it simple and say we're gonna have to put 20% and that's what you should strive for. You should strive for the minimum amount of money you can put down as your down payment. So investment property needs 20% down as a down payment. The reason this happens, by the way, is because the bank feels safe. Once you have equity in there, once there is an amount there that you should care enough, because you see, people might not default on their primary residence because their primary residence is where they live. But chances are high, if you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna default on something like this and not pay your loan, and then the bank is gonna be stuck with then maybe a vacant apartment or who knows what else. So they want you to have some equity. So that's why they are gonna require you to put as much down as possible. But back to the part that I said before, you have to build a good relationship. You build a good relationship with the bank and a banker, either a credit union or a mortgage broker is your solution. If you're starting out, you have no relationship with people, you just go there and here and you don't hear the things you wanna hear, you go find a mortgage broker and you go and talk to credit unions. These two things are gonna help you do a lot of good. Credit unions, very cheap interest rates, people, they're not for profit necessarily, they just don't wanna lose money. And mortgage brokers, they know the ins and outs, you know? You're gonna pay them for sure, you know, they're gonna make money off of that, but they have your best interest in mind. They wanna make sure you succeed, give you the best deal. So mortgage brokers, and credit unions are the way to go. Let me go back to my example here, okay? So let's see how we're gonna structure this deal right now, okay? So, here is what we have. We have the purchase price. It is gonna be a million dollars, right? The loan, it is gonna be $800,000, right? And then, what is gonna be your down payment will be two hundred thousand dollars all right so this is how the deal stands with now i'm gonna tell you a magic word what you should strive for it is and i'm gonna underline it right after i say you should strive for and you shouldn't make a deal without that in my opinion an interest only loan and you're like alex what the heck is an interest only loan well after i underline it because it's super crucial i'll explain to you right away an interest-only loan is a loan that you pay annually for a certain amount of money you agree with the bank, just the interest. So, the interest-only you're gonna strive for, I'm gonna tell you, let's say that you get a 4% 
And if the bank that you're talking to doesn't give you the 4%, well, go to another bank. You know, 4% at least interest only, the rest only, for at least two to three years. That's what you should strive for. Interest only for two to three years, right? This is the recipe here. This is the secret so your deal is successful. If you have this going on right here, 4%, for at least two years, you can do a lot of things, all right? So you're like, Alex, why is this gonna help me so much? Well, let me show you why. If we go closer here, look how nice our apartment is, right? So if we go closer here, I'm gonna start working on the numbers now. We said our loan is eight loan. It is $800,000, all right? There we go. We said the rent we receive from these guys, we said earlier, the rent we get is a thousand bucks a month. All right. So let's calculate what we can calculate here. According to this thing here, right, we're going to get, we have 10 units, right? 10 units. So every month we're going to receive $10,000 monthly. I'm using round numbers, like I said. This means annually you're going to receive uh, $10,000, $120,000. That's what's going to be your annual income from this property. 50% of this is going to go to taxes. It's going to go to maintenance. This is going to break. That is going to break. You're going to have to, you know, paint things. You're going to have to change some plumbing. So 50% of the $120,000, I'm going to tell you, is going to go to expenses, you know? So if that's the case, and I'm overestimating because there is no way 50% is going to go there. But, you know, like we said, we're going to play it safe because we want to structure the deal the right way. So 50% is going to be going to expenses. So 60K a year will be expenses and uh, property taxes. All right. So after expenses, you are left with $60,000. All right. A year. So we're not confused. So if you're left with $60,000 a year, and I suggest you take a pen and paper so you guys have this written down so you see how the, this deal is structured. Now we have to pay the bank. And since we have to pay the bank, now we have $60,000 a year left. The loan payment, okay? How much is gonna be our loan payment? It's gonna be 4% of $800,000. 4% of $800,000 a year, you can do the math, is gonna be $32,000 a year. $32,000 a year is going to be how much you're going to have to pay the bank for borrowing you $800,000. Now, that's not going to be forever. We said our term is for two years, right? Two years. So you'll be left after expenses and after paying bank, we'll be left with $50,000 a year that was left. Minus 32, that was our mortgage, we'll be left with $28,000 a year, all right? I hope you guys take notes on this, do it by yourself so you guys can realize. So that's going to be our money for our pocket, right? $28,000 a year. Now, let's see, uh, and I'll tell you what you, sh what you have to do after that. We said the following, 10-unit apartment building, $1,000 a month is the rent, a hand the guy that sold it to you wanted $100,000 per unit, right? So the sale price of the property was a million dollars, right? The purchase price was a million dollars, that you will have to put down 20%, we said right here. So the down payment would have to be $200,000 because 20% of a million dollars is $200,000. So we said, you go to every bank, you do whatever you have to do, you get an interest only loan for 4% for at least two years. You find somebody that helps you, the mortgage broker or the credit union. Now you go back here and you calculate the numbers. You see that the thousand dollars a year in rent, since there is 10 units, adds up to $120,000 a year. We said we're going to overestimate our expenses and our expenses were 60 k a year, right? So after we did all this and we, we said that the 4% of $800,000 a year right here, right? 4% of $800,000 a year, we found out it's 32 grand for two years. That's how much, that's the amount we have to pay for two years the bank just so they can loan us this amount, right? Then we're left with $28,000. First of all, what a person with numbers would tell you. Here's how you run the numbers about this deal. So you're gonna put $200,000, right? That is your down payment. If you put $200,000 as your down payment and then you're left with $28,000 a year, this is a deal that gives you over 10% this is about 14% cash on cash return 
annually. This is great. There is no deals like this, right? This is an example. So you put $200,000 a year down and then $20, $28,000 a year comes to your pocket with a 4% interest only loan, right? For two years. So, well, first of all, I'll tell you what you can do so the money is not taxed and this is going to be a cash out refinance. But before we go to this part, uh, what I want to tell you is the following. The two years you agreed with the bank that you, you have to fix the property and you have to make changes. And here is the important part. You have to make changes that uh, they increase the rent preferably. So this way you in maximize your cash flow. If you make changes like a new fridge or a new kitchen cabinet, these things allow you to be able to charge more for rent. You can make it pet friendly. People will pay ridiculous amounts of money for their pets. So if you do changes that they allow you to increase the rent and you run that place better, so you trim the fat, so you cut down expenses, then not only you'll be able to charge more for rent, but you'll be able to keep more for your pocket because the expenses of the property you just bought are less. So if you do these things, you'll be able to have more cash flow in your pocket. So maximize the amount of rent you can get to an extent that you respect your tenants, of course, and that it the market allows you and trying to trim the fat when it comes to, you know, expenses. These are two things that are going to increase your cash flow. Now, you're like, Alex, if I do these things great, after the two years, what am I going to do? Whoa, there we go. That's a great question. I'm glad you asked. Did you remember to smash that like button so we're going to keep going? Well, here is what we're going to do now. Around the 18 month mark, since you're going to have like 24 months for the two years to be over, around the 18th month mark, you go back to the bank and you're like, hey, I need another another interest only loan for another two or three years and if they don't give you you go to another bank but you do whatever you have to do to get another interest only loan from this bank or another bank so you ha you extend just paying the interest and not any principal on your loan by the way if your investing strategy is building equity that's not the way to go i'm just telling you a way to make a lot of money in real estate you know especially with the stock market competing to real estate right now, that's the way to save so much money in your pocket. So for at least two years, we said, right? So you fix the place up. And like I said, relationships are really important. So you go to the bank and you ask them to do a cash out refinance, all right? Once you fixed everything up, the houses look better, the apartments look better, the expenses run better. You bring all your receipts, you go to the bank, you're like, I wanna do a cash out refi, right? And you bring all your receipts, you stress out the fact that not only you put money in this place, but you put all your time, you put all your thinking, you know, you sit the banker down and you talk to them, you show them love, you will respect them, you know, because they are the key person between him and the appraiser. These two people will make the magic happen for you, right? So an appraiser comes out and you show them all you've done and then you show them everything, including your receipts and how much happier the tenants are because they live in a better place. The appraiser we're gonna come out is gonna see all these things and your property is gonna worth 20% more now, 20% more. So this 20% more, you can cash out refinance it. If you cash out refinance the 20% more, this is your down payment. So now you pull this money out. The appraiser said that your property is worth 20% more and this means that this down payment you put down, now you pull it out. And do you know what's the best part? What you just pulled out is tax free. It's tax free because it's a loan, right? So you pull the equity out and now you have no money invested in the property, but you have no money invested in the property in the form of down payment. But let's not forget that you spend all this money fixing up the place, whatever you spent. So there is money invested, not in the form of a down payment now, right? That's why you go to the bank and you tell them you need another interest only loan. Because for the next two years, appreciation is gonna be your friend. And as the time goes by, this property is gonna worth more. So you're gonna go back to the bank, get another interest only loan for at least two years. And now that you have no money invested in the form of down payment, all the money you need to pull out is the money that you invest in the property. And you know, another two years is gonna pass by all you have to pay the bank is $32,000. You do another cash out refinance, or if you don't, you don't have to, but this is another way to pull the money that you invest in. So after four years with two interest only loans, at the end of the day, you have no money invested in the property, not only in the way of a down payment, but even in the fixing up the place. If you structure the renting right and the cash flow right, you'll be able to have a tiny little bit of a cash flow as well. 
So this is the power of real estate. This is why if you do things the right way and you learn from people that they've done it, you can make a ton of money in the stock market and in real estate. So to sum it up, once again, two interest only loans, preferably 4%, preferably two years. This is the way so you guys can maximize the amount of cash flow you can have for the four years. You know, usually people don't stay in properties for five or six years anyway. You know, they take 31 exchange it to bigger properties and bigger properties. There is two schools of thought when it comes to real estate. You can be a school of thought that you just want to build wealth and you don't care about, you know, this interest only loans all you care about is building wealth building equity you just want to have equity and wealth and you know that's a great way to go about it too but if you want to approach this as a business and you want to be in a place for five six years and then move on to the next the bigger deal with the 1031 exchange or by cash out refinancing hard cash on your money tax free these are great ways to do it i love you guys i hope you guys saw this until the end i hope you guys understood if you have any questions because it's a little bit of a complicated matter please hit me up Please subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next one.